the in-class essay is still an analytical essay. You will still be required to respond to a prompt, and this will be something more than summary. Somebody asked me in second period today, so are we just summarizing the book? Well, that would be silly. And I hope you have a little bit more respect for me and my assignments by now. You've already written a summary report. Why would I ask you to write another one? This is the point at which you engage in analysis. And that analysis is going to vary from book to book, from prompt to prompt. So if I'm writing a prompt for the Da Vinci Code, I guarantee that this plot-based thriller full of suspense is going to receive a different prompt from Freakonomics, which is a non-narrative, non-fiction book used to crunch data and look at studies. So what kind of literary analysis are you going to be engaged in? I have no idea. Well, actually, I do have an idea. I've got it all on record. But um, <laughs> everybody will be different. So all you need to know is that it is literary analysis, and it is prompt-based. So please remember, when you answer an essay prompt, you know how to do it. These should not be new notes. You should know exactly what's going on in this regard. You restate a portion of the prompt, and you add original information that answers that prompt. Two-step process. This may result, this may result in a standard four-part literary analysis claim. It might not. It depends upon your prompt. And once again, I hate to be vague, but everybody has a different prompt. All you need to remember is that you have this two-step process to follow, always. So let me give you an example of a prompt. Um, this is the model example that you will find on the website. Let's say I walked in and pick up my assignment sheet, and this is what I see. I've read To Kill a Mockingbird. Explain how Harper Lee changes Jem's character through the course of the novel. Pretty simple and specific to Jem. Notice that it's focusing on one specific literature concept. What is that lit concept? Yeah, which type of characterization specifically? What do we call it? Thank you. Dynamic characterization. It's focusing on dynamic characterization of one character only. It's not focusing on Tom Robinson nor Boo Radley. It's not focusing on the setting of Makeham, the theme of To Kill a Mockingbird, or the symbol that is used to convey that theme. It is focusing only on Jem and the character changes that he undergoes. Here's a, here's a response. Through the course of the novel, Harper Lee changes Jem from a childish adolescent to a mature young man. I have restated and I have answered. This process, moving from this prompt to this answer, when you walk in on Thursday, if you know your book, should take you about one to two minutes. The prompts should not be exceptionally challenging or intellectually confusing. You should say, oh, OK, I know what the answer to this is. Might take you maybe a little bit more time. Might even take you less time than that. Once again, depends upon the nature of the prompt and your familiarity with the book. Piece of advice, be familiar with your book. If you are unfamiliar with your book, if you haven't finished it, you might have a problem. And that problem is not necessarily that you couldn't write an essay, but that it will take you more time to craft that essay. And time is something you don't have in abundance with 42 minutes. If you have a copy of the essay model, then you can grab it and you might want to take notes on it. If not, then uh, just go ahead and take notes as you would take notes normally. But I'm going to look at the model example for the essay that, uh, that I'm starting with that prompt in that claim. Here we go. Uh, hold on a second here. Let me There we go. It's a little bit better. OK, so my name, blah, 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 instructions, prompt, rubric. This is the cover sheet that you'll see when you walk in. The only thing that will differ are the, the names of the title and the prompt. Everything else is the same for everybody. OK, here's my essay. I want to explore it piece by piece, show you exactly how I write it, wrote it, give you a formula that you can follow also. You can modify it to fit your needs, but basically you're following a formula. In To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee tells the story of a modest family, the Finches, and their experiences with intolerance in the southern town of Maycomb during the Great Depression. Atticus Finch, the father of the family, has two children, Scout and Jem. Scout is the younger of the two, being five years old at the beginning of the novel. Jem begins at nine and ends the novel at 12, living through the turbulent years of early adolescence. 
Jem's age enables Lee to develop him as a character in the midst of change. And through the novel, she changes him from a childish adolescent to a mature young man. Take a look at the intro, analyze a little bit. I would say that it contains three parts. Um, and in analyzing it, taking a look at those three parts, ask yourself, how does it seem, first of all, different from what you just wrote in the short essay? Different from QARs? How am I writing this a little bit differently? Connor. You kind of got like a thesis at the last second. That's right. So the claim that I just gave you in the smart board presentation is right there as my last sentence, not as the first sentence. You are starting to develop essay skills. So far, I haven't asked you to write full essays. You've written short essays at the most. A full essay requires a complete introduction, an informal, very narrow, kind of simple, by the book. Your um, claim is the last sentence of that introduction. You will write a formal literary analysis as your final paper for this project. And I'll, I'll be very clear, but here's your first indication of it. In an intro paragraph for a literary analysis essay, your claim is the last sentence. OK, so what starts it then? What do I begin with? What is all that material before it? Gretchen. Um, the True. So what would you say that I need to do for every single one of these essays? What, what does every single essay need to start with? For this, it happens to be character and setting. Sydney. Give background information. Whatever I need to understand this. And what do I need to understand it? The, basically the setting and the characters. All of this material all of that material by the way I would color code this but for some reason when I record this and I use color coding on Microsoft Word it totally blackens the words on the recording, and then I post it on YouTube, and then you can't see anything. So, sorry, I'm going to underline. Um, this is all, all this material is background. What background do I give? I'm thinking of To Kill a Mockingbird. I don't see Boo Radley in there. I don't see Tom Robinson in there. I don't see Mrs. DuBose or D Tim Johnson in there. What made my decision on what background and what information to include? Yeah, prompts about Jem. So I need enough background to understand who Jem is and where he fits into the narrative. That's it. So what's that third part then, the one that I have not yet underlined? I said there are three parts of this intro. What am I doing in that third part? Jem's age enables Lee to develop in his character in the midst of change. Colin? Uh, it's, it's really close to the prompt, yeah. So there's a little bit of the prompt in there. Something more, but yeah. It's very close, Kristen. It's a transition. So an introduction is, uh, or transition is more than introduction. It's let's go leave here and let's go to here. So it's introduction and conclusion, kind of. Um, transition. There you go. Background information that I need to understand the prompt, or the claim. Transition to the claim, and then the claim itself. Connor. You want it general? Uh, that's a that's an introduction strategy that you've probably been taught before for certain types of essays that can work here, but it's not necessary. I understand the inverted pyramid kind of um, introduction strategy. That's really effective for persuasive essays, argument essays, sometimes for reports and so on. For literary analysis, it doesn't always work. What I do need, Connor, in all cases is enough background information on, on the book to understand the claim. Imagine you have never read To Kill a Mockingbird. Does this give you enough to go on? I would say yes. And then we'll add more detail in the support, but that's general. All right, let's take a look at the first paragraph. Er, by the way, um, when I write these, when I write model examples and when I grade yours, I am really, folks, following a formula. If there is one theme to Honors English 10, it's learning formulas for good writing. And then eventually later on, in fact, starting next year, if you go to AP, you'll be stretched to improvise and be creative. But this year is all about drilling formula. So use that, and you'll be good. Um, early in the novel, Lee describes Jem as a typically immature boy. He plays with Scout in fantasy games where they reenact adventure stories from Tarzan or Tom Swift. He also proposes and accepts dares for risky activity, such as touching the ghostly Radley house. 
In fact, Jem's interest in the legend of neighbor Boo Radley is filled with superstitions about haints and hot steams, superstitions that clearly mark his mentality as childish. But one of the clearest examples of Jem's immaturity comes with his reaction to the insults of Mrs. DuBose, an elderly woman in the neighborhood. After Mrs. DuBose hurls an onslaught of insults against Jem, he destroys her beautiful camellia bushes. Jem's irrational response to the old woman's insults clearly reveals Lee's strategy in the first part of the novel. She wishes to show the reader that Jem is emotional and hasty, just like a child. What have I done with my first paragraph? Omar. Very good. In other words, I've supported one portion of this claim up here. So I look at my claim. My claim and your claim, they are roadmaps for your paper. One portion of my claim is finished in paragraph two. Can somebody show me or can somebody's tell me about the points of integration? Where is integration happening in this paragraph? Yeah. Or immature or a variation of it. So let's go through. Help me out. Yeah, Michael. Very good. Point of integration number one. I can find four distinct points of integration in this paragraph throughout. Michael. Mentality as childish. Very good. Richa. Uh, yep. uh, let's see. Nora. Good. That's effective integration. I have specific evidence, right? Cited details. Uh, do I have any quotations? Well, little quotations, but I don't have any big ones. But everything's cited. Specific concrete evidence. And then strung throughout points of integration. If you are simply integrating up here in the topic sentence of your paragraph, it's not enough. You must remind your reader of the idea. And notice that I haven't been really overt about it. I have not said, um, this is how Harper Lee develops Jem as a childish character. That's clumsy and unnecessary. I just use words like immaturity, childish, throughout, child, and then everything is brought, all that evidence is brought together down to the claim. This changes when Jem witnesses the injustice of the Tom Robinson trial. Jem, like most viewers, is able to see through the lie Bob and Mayella Ewell tell against Robinson. He states his belief that Atticus cannot lose the trial against the unfairly accused man. Unfortunately, Atticus loses, and Jem's childish hope is destroyed. As Jem's face was streaked with angry tears, he says, it ain't right, Atticus. Here, Lee is showing the reader how the irrationality of Jem's childish understanding of the world has suffered a fatal blow from the reality of injustice. He will never be the same again. What part of the claim am I supporting in this paragraph? The change. Very good. If you, and this is, by the way, something to remember. If you are ever a analyzing dynamic characterization, you need three pieces of information. Piece one is the opening character trait. Piece two is the point of change. And piece three is the ending character trait. This person starts off like this, but then this thing happens, and they end up like this. That's dynamic character change. I followed that format because I know how to analyze for character change pretty simply. So I have three paragraphs of support. Starting character trait, point of change, ending character trait. And you folks are correct. This is my point of change. Where are my um, points of integration? Yeah, Kristen. Um, this changes right there in the opening line. Where else? Yeah, Priyanka. Yeah, he will never be the same again. What else indicates something going away and something else new happening? John? The child's hope is destroyed. Very good. Did you have another one, Michael? Yeah, the fatal blow is kind of a poetic way of saying that it has been destroyed.